All right, so good morning. Tell me who you are. Uh, my name is Anthony. An Anthony, all right, and you're getting ready for the competition this morning. Yes. Tell us what you're making and what you're doing. So as of right now, I'm deboning chicken thighs uh -huh. so that I can use those to make my country gravy that is going to go with my barbecue chicken thighs, some roasted carrots, and sweet potatoes with a jalapeno cornbread on top. Ooh. Kind of like a chicken pot pie. Uh. Minus the pie. That's All right. And <clears throat> what was your inspiration for this uh, this creation? So I've been doing a lot of just what? different soft work. But I oh, hang on. Let me snag Rob, too. Rob, you want to say hi? Sure. Rob Landolfi, who is a guy behind the whole Culinary okay. Olympics. How about that? Yeah, well, well, this is actually what our twenty second year. Twenty second year. The Culinary year. Yeah. yeah. That's good. They've been alive that long. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff uh, over the years. A lot if, of retired now too. So. Yeah, and yeah, if there be next year, I'll retire. And if there wasn't an uh, interruption, this would be like twenty five. Exactly. Yeah. So we started yeah. here. This is actually where we started in this building. Yeah, and we're in the Putnam Putnam Dining Facility, yep. Yes. And uh, then we moved over to the Rome Ballroom. I think we we must have been here for probably about ten years. I think, I think it was probably about ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we've been over at the Rome Ballroom as well. But we just decided to come back here and relive the past a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Go the it's been room. renovated since then, so it's beautiful. So we figured, yeah, that, uh, let all the old timers see it. Awesome event! Ballroom. It's an awesome event. Well, I was just talking with this gentleman about what he's creating, oh. and I'm getting hungry. Uh, All right, I yeah. Been, I should have done a breakfast. No, no. Tell me what your inspiration was for this. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. So I do love barbecue, mm -hmm. but everyone does ribs, brisket, you know, things of that nature, and uh -huh. people do barbecue, which is grilled chicken with some sort of bought barbecue sauce. On uh huh. It. Yep. So I figured let's do a little bit more. And see what it could really be like. So uh -huh. now, the only problem with that is I gotta turn a chicken thigh into something that beats whatever's going on down here. Don't but, look over there. Just oh, yeah. keep your focus over here. It's My gonna be great. Is somewhere. Hopefully, it's here. Though. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy it. And thank you so much for chatting with me about this. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thanks. Look at look at all these ingredients. People have have their prep trays all ready to go. I'm gonna see if I can snag another chef here see what they're making good morning good morning. good morning how are you good how are you yeah, I'm good thanks for asking my name is Ruth I am ravings and cravings on the radio and I'm doing a little movie footage of the chefs preparing all their food so could are you one of the chefs I am ah oh, I nailed it huh yeah, yeah. my name is Alicia Alicia awesome tell me what you're making I'm making a Peruvian ceviche today Ooh, Peruvian too bad people can't Someone's pounding. That's really rude. It's Sean. No, I'm just kidding. I'm That's kidding. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're in the kitchen. It's all right. Uh, too bad people can't smell. Yeah, all right. Sorry. So, what's in your? Or is it a secret? Um, what, no, what's... actually, it's pretty simple. It's like three main ingredients. It's conch, white fish. It's usually very good. Or, or we did it with a northern pike. It's a little bit harder to get. Uh huh. Um, I added my own touch to it, which was a mango. Then it's cilantro. Mm. Lime juice, a little bit of white vinegar, some salt and black pepper. Uh, sounds awesome. I can smell a little bit from where I'm standing, which I'm a little far away, but I just want people to see how beautiful it is, the colors. It's going to be even more beautiful when you eat it, I promise. I, and, you know, I, I love fish for breakfast, so like, yeah, bring it. You don't have a lot of fish, I got you. Sounds awesome, but you know, I didn't bring, I didn't bring my Tupperware today. Um, and I forgot. Okay. We've got some to-go containers right behind you. <laughs> I, I, I just you. <laughs> thank you so much, and thanks for chatting with me today. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Have a great day. All right, we're gonna move along to. Oh my gosh, the equipment in here. Look at this. This thing is big enough to take a bath in it. Wow. I love kitchens. Hey, are you one of the chefs? Yes. May I speak with you? Of course. Even though I was ragging on you for banging things. Okay, everybody. I saw you using that immersion blender. Yeah, I was. All right. Tell us who you are. Sean Hawkins. All right, Sean. What are you creating for us today? I have a sous vide duck breast with roasted red potatoes, uh, sautéed Harry Cover, uh, red wine reduction, and a vanilla scented carrot puree. Oh, my gosh. Wow. This is quite a lot of things going on. Quite a few, yeah. 
So what was your inspiration for your dish? Um, I ran it as a special in one of the restaurants I worked at. Uh -huh. Similar thing, not exactly the same. Yeah. I wanted to recreate it for this competition. I love duck. Me too. Like who doesn't? Do you like duck, Alicia? I love duck. All right, good. <laughs> then we can be friends. <laughs> All right, so we have the potatoes here. <laughs> are these your ingredients too? They are, yes. All right, so this is what? Oh, well, that's just some of the cooking liquid from the carrots. So okay. This? That is just garlic infused oil for my potatoes and my green beans. Ooh, all right. And we have some pureed. Vanilla scented carrot puree. Ooh, vanilla scented. Okay, wait, I'm going to lean over and. Oh, it smells and so good. We have duck breast sous vide. So, what does it mean when you sous vide? So, it's going to be cooked in water that's at a consistent temperature and circulating. Okay. It's, oh, uh, there's a green bean. There's a green bean. Okay. And it's sealed in a uh, cryo vac bag. Uh huh. All the flavor, all the juices, and the temperature is going to be consistent no matter how long you're cooking it. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Oh, thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. And it's okay to bang stuff, all right? So. I'll bang. I'll bang away. <laughs> you bang away. Hey. Okay. Good morning. Hello. Are you one of the chefs? I am. May I speak to you for a little while sure. and get you on movie footage here? Yeah. My name's Ruth. Uh, my name's Curtis. Curtis. Good morning, and tell us what you're creating here. Uh, so I'm making my own take on a choco taco. On a what? On a choco taco. Choco? You said okay. choco taco. Yeah, by Klondike. Oh. So they were discontinued this year, and uh, people were going crazy on the internet. Uh -huh. So I wanted to do my own version of it. Alrighty, so what step are you at here at this point? So right now I'm making the taco shell. It's an almond twill. Twill is just a really thin cookie. When it comes out of the oven, you can shape it to any shape you want. Oh. So rather than do a waffle cone kind of deal, this is my, this is going to be my shell. A twill. A I know, you know what, that's a new one on me. Okay. Yes. And you're absolutely all from scratch? Yep, everything from scratch. I even did my ice cream by hand, no ice cream machine. Really? Yeah, I churned it by hand. It's, wow. it's in the freezer right now setting up, uh -huh. but it took me about... 45, 50 minutes to get it to that point. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to look forward to tasting your creation. Awesome. Thank you. Good luck to you. All right. And we're going to move along to see. Oh, I love this. I love big machinery. Don't you guys? Look at you guys in the kitchen with big machinery. I just think it's awesome. All right. I'm going to find another chef. Looks like there's one over here. Good morning, are you one of the chefs? I am. May I speak with you for a little while? Tell, sure. Talk to me about what you're making. You're Alexis. Alexis. Okay, Alexis, um, right thank now you. Right I'm making gulay frosting, which is a purple sweet potato. Ooh, purple, can I zoom in on that? Sure. All right, so what are you creating for the contest today? I am making a mochi cake flavored with matcha green tea and a black charcoal caramel. Uh -huh. A dragon fruit marshmallow cream and sesame brittle and saffron ice cream. Okay, so like, it sounds like a summer delight. It's but gonna have a lot of color in it. It does. So yeah. I didn't use food colorings. I just used like natural powders. Where'd you, it. where'd you come up with all your ideas for this? I just, I like saffron ice cream, and I thought about colors that would look good with it, and then I sort of went with flavors that were that color. And uh huh. Sort of how it evolved. I, I love ube ice cream. So, you know, if I was at home, mm -hmm. I would say, could I lick the spatula? But we're not at home, <laughs> so I'm not going to ask. Do you have any other elements of your creation anywhere nearby where I can get it on movie footage? Or is it... Yeah, I will follow you. I'd love to see. Lots of things going on here today. This is a black caramel. Uh, oh, what makes a caramel black? A uh, charcoal powder. Charcoal powder. I think I think you like to experiment with things in the kitchen, huh? Sesame brittle. Oh, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah, I like doing kind of weird flavor combinations. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm all about that too. Well, thank you for letting me chat with you for a little while, Alexis. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Where else are we going to go here? Good morning. Good morning, guys. Are you guys chef, chefs for today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you are you creating something for the contest? 
Um, well, I'm going around and getting film footage of people creating things. If you would let me talk to you for a little while. What are you? Yeah. All right. Well, we're both social media people, huh? What are you? Tell me your name and what are you making today? We have Rolando Castiones. And what are you making? Filipino pork adobo belly, pork belly adobo. Uh, adobo. Did you know that? Well, you do. You wouldn't know this, but when I gave piano lessons to Filipino family, they paid me with adobo. It was good payment. <laughs> well, good luck. Looks got a lot of work to do here. Yeah. All right. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Are you one of the chefs too? Yes, ma'am. May I speak to you? Sure. Even though I'm already speaking to you. My, my name is Ruth. I will be one of your judges, but I'm not judging right now. I'm doing a little bit of footage, hopefully for charter. Tell us your name and what you're making. Uh, my name is Gary Ellis. I am currently making the cream cheese filling for my uh, Chipotle cranberry cream cheese danishes. I'm going to be rolling out the danishes in a few minutes, and then there's also going to be an eggnog creme anglaise with it. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Thank you. So, how long did it take you to perfect this lovely dessert idea? Um, I workshopped it with a coworker for about 20 minutes, and I made it twice just to get the, the kinks out of the recipe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What's been challenging about it? Anything? Or is it just easy? No, just trying to figure out the best way to, to make it look fancier. Danes aren't a very... Yeah. They're a very rustic, very home style thing. So just trying to figure out a way to make it look a little nicer than, mm -hmm. than usual. Getting the cranberry uh, chutney to thicken up too. I ended up having to use a, um, a slurry, a cornstarch slurry to thicken it up. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how much I boiled it, it just wouldn't thicken and then it would eventually burn. So... Thank that's okay. Well, yeah, you, you know, that's okay. We all work together, right? It's a team effort. Yes. Here we are. So tell me, why would you use a whisk as opposed to, uh, like, even a handheld beater? I there. didn't bring my handheld beater, and the only mixer we have is a, like, 30 to 50-quart <laughs> mixer. Yeah. And it just won't work. Oh, so. sure, sure. Just got to make do with what you have. Yeah. Oh, well, that's. I think that's a good uh, axiom mm -hmm. for living, especially cooking. All right, well, good luck to you. Thank you. Gonna look forward to trying that. All right, let me see who else I can find. Another chef somewhere. I'm gonna look, just take you around the kitchen at least, see what we have going on here. This is a beautiful kitchen, honestly. Are you one of the chefs? <laughs> She's like walking past me. Do you not wanna be on? I, I, I would love to come talk to you if you're making something. May I? No? All right. Okay. That's okay. Good morning. Are you one of the chefs? Yes, I am. Can I follow you and see what you're making? <laughs> My name is Ruth. Is that okay? Uh, I remember you. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Lucinda. Yeah. Where are we going? What are we doing? I'm, going to the I'm doing brown stew chicken. Okay. I'm, I'm going to come back and find you too. Yeah, this is... This is live, so, you know, we're in the Putnam Dining Hall here now. Oh, you're working out here? Yeah. All right, Lucinda. Ooh, 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 let me see, let me see. This is my stewed chicken. Woo! Just reducing it to get the gravy. Okay, I got to get a little closer to smell, but I want to make sure my phone... Oh, my phone. Hi, how are you? Are you a fan of hers or what? <laughs> really? Why? Because <laughs> she's the best. She's just so little love in the kitchen. Why not? Here we go. People are here with their friends. People are, yeah. I'm going to get a little more footage of your food there. People are here with their friends. A lot of happy people. And she had another pot. All right. So it looks like we got some cauliflower with onions cauliflower and onions that's not you okay all right well we'll find that thank you so much lucinda you're welcome good luck good luck all right yeah this is the putnam dining hall i just want you guys to see
It's a beautiful, beautiful facility. All right, back in the kitchen we go. Nice, nice little knife station. People's notes. See, we're get, we're all getting ready here. Okay. All righty. Brian, are you one of the chefs? Yes. Can I follow you to your station wherever you're working? I was just working on, I'm pretty much done. I'm May I? Yeah. All right, I'm following Brian Parker. I think that's what, well, that's what your name tag says, yes. right? Yes. I'm Ruth. How are you doing, Ruth? I'm good. Oh, I was just taking some footage of the cauliflower onion. Yes, I'm Brian Parker. I'm a chef from the South, and I'm in the Colorado Olympics right now. I'm working on a cauliflower puree for my sear shrimp and cauliflower so you're making a puree out of uh, onions, garlic, cauliflower, salt, pepper. All right. Sometimes the easiest thing is to bring out the most, the most flavor in a vegetable is just salt and pepper. So some people may not know what a puree is. So can you explain what that is? Well, puree is basically you're taking it, um, you're taking the cauliflower, you take whatever you're pureeing and turn it into, uh, essentially put it into a blender right here. And we're going to put it on two or three and get into a liquid form, but it's going to be a little thick so we can spread it on a plate. Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to do with the puree? Well, it's going to go on the plate and it's going to accompany in uh, fried grits with uh, shrimp, um, candy bacon, and pomegranate seeds. Southern inspired something? Uh, Southern New England inspired with the, the shrimp, the pomegranate seeds, and the candy bacon. I think that, that will end up being very colorful, won't it? Yes. We'll, All right. We'll see. Yeah, well, I think I'm, I'm going to try to get a picture of everybody's creation Definitely. when it's, like, sitting in front of me. Definitely. But um, anyway, Should. good luck Thank to you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. All right. We got Brian. I'm going to see where else we're going to go here today. Good morning. Good morning. Are you one of the chefs? Yes. May I speak to you? Sure. All right. It's going to be a little... I, that's some kind of uh, machinery there. I never saw I never saw one that big. Sorry, if I'm interrupting you, you tell me to go away. All right? Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. All right. So tell us who you are. Uh, Joshua Grady. All right, Joshua. And what are you creating in here? I'm making grits, but out of popcorn. What? So it's popcorn, shrimp, and grits. So everybody's thinking popcorn, shrimp, but the popcorn's really the grits. Whoa! That just like. That kind of blows my mind. Well, I've never seen an immersion blender that big. I just used mine yesterday. Mine that looks like a jackhammer. <laughs> so, what was your inspiration for this recipe well, item? The initial recipe was made by uh, Chef uh, Daniel Patterson from the restaurant Koi quite a few years ago. Oh, and if, if that's time restaurant. sensitive, please don't oh, let no, me interrupt. Okay, all right. Which was very, very, very uh, complex. And this is a much simplified, simplified version of it that uh -huh. could be even done uh -huh. here. And I mean, the motivation is it's organic popcorn. It's all like the shrimps cooked with, uh, you know, five uh, A rated uh, Szechuan peppercorn. Ooh. You know, the, the liquid is whey from ricotta that I made at home. Oh wow! You know, with milk from Fish Family Farm. Like I'm all about food the way it was supposed to be, the way it was mm -hmm. 70 years ago. Like the, the farm to table. I'm trying to kind of show that with a few good ingredients, you make really good food. And random question: Who's your favorite character on The Office? Oh, Dwight. Okay, because like I'm looking at your hat and I'm going, <laughs> I know Dunder Mifflin, and uh, so Dwight is your guy. Huh? Oh yeah. All right, well, be inspired, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, we'll see you out there. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's see. Did I miss somebody? What are you waiting for? I'm uh, cooking another tweel. i got to do them one at a time because they it's, it's very delicate, we'll say. Yeah. It only takes, like, a couple minutes, and it goes south really quick. So I do one at a time, keep my eye on it, and... Yeah, just go from there. So you got to watch it. Yeah. Yep. Not like a boiled pot that, yeah. you know, they no, say. Exactly. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay, all right. All right. What was that word again? Tweel. T How do you spell it? T-U-I-L-E. So that looks, sounds French. French. Yep. Yeah, all right. All right, Lucinda, that's okay. It's all right. It's okay. There's nothing sacred here. All righty. I'm going to walk on through. I want to see who I missed. Thank you. Thank you. If I missed anybody, I got you guys. 
I got the adobo person. We're good. Oh, I wonder. Good morning. I'm Ruth. Can I get a little opportunity to speak with you for a little while? See what you're sure. making. I'm just rolling these up right now. All right. This will be fine. All right. Your name is Lois Ann Sisson. All right. What are you creating for today? I'm creating chocolate croissants. You're making croissants. Chocolate croissants from scratch. From scratch. Okay. Like I've done that. Yes. And I was not successful. They take three days to make. Oh no wonder I wasn't successful. <laughs> Mine don't take that long. Wow, tell us a little bit about what it takes to make croissants from scratch. That's pretty impressive. A lot of patience. That's why I didn't succeed. All right. Yes, a lot of patience. Wow, so three days. I'm going to get a little footage of you working here so that people yeah, can no see. Problem. Yeah, these are my um, fast versions right here mm -hmm. so that the judges know how I do it. Okay. But these croissants up here, they took me three days because you have to let them refrigerated for 12 hours. Oh, so After these were turn. So these were like refrigerated. Turn refrigerated. Turn refrigerated. Talk about time intensive. Yeah. So these are the these and are then the they're god. People eat them like god in 5 seconds. In 5 seconds. Yeah. These are beautiful. So these are the quicker ones, but Oh, are these for like people to sample? Are these the ones for yeah, these are going to be for people to sample. Yep. And I have the ones over there for the judges, but we're going to see how they turn out because these are looking pretty good. <laughs> so. All right. Well, this is pretty amazing. I'm, I'm sorry I'm in your way. No good luck to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Looks like somebody was working here, but look at what people use. Take a look at some of the ingredients. Oh, we know whose this is, right? Pomegranate. There's those nice jumbo shrimp. Whew. I'm gonna get to try that later. I'm excited. Biscuit dough. Uh, it's a Danish dough, an enriched dough. Enriched. When you say enriched, what does that mean? Uh, usually, that it's had butter added to it. All right, so you know what? If I was at home, I would be saving one of these balls of dough to eat raw. <laughs> Did you ever try it raw? Uh, it doesn't. I personally don't enjoy it raw because the butter is still cold. Yeah. Uh, when it cooks, it kind of melts into the dough, uh. gives it that um, buttery flavor to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that I would personally eat raw. Yeah, you could. But. Oh, I'm gonna go around you here. Oh, these are beautiful. I smell the cinnamon. Well, that's the hope, and that's the. Uh, I, I love sort of cinnamon, hope. personally. Yes, I think it's a very it's traditional, and for that reason, it's very traditional because. All right, I'm gonna take a little walk around and see if I missed anybody else. Oh, it's Rob again. I don't know if I missed anybody. I think I got everybody in this kitchen, but I don't think I got everyone. Did you get all eleven? I think so. This is where they're all at. All right, I'm gonna yep. just take a walk around one more time and then okay. I think I'm good. Sounds Anything good. you wanna say? No, I mean, it's just, uh, we're just so excited to, you know, be back here doing the recipe contest and the yeah. point competition. And, you know, it's been a long couple of years and yeah. uh, it, it's great to see just, you know, everyone working together as a team and, you know, just, you know, socializing, communicating, laughing. And this is what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, you know, starting next week, all the kids will be back. Off from winter break, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll be back in our dining units feeding the 25,000 students a week. And so, this is just a nice break, a nice opportunity for them just to show off their skills and uh, allow their personalities to come out in their dishes. 25,000 people to feed every day, we, yeah. Well, it works out to about 185,000 a week, some, somewhere around there. All right, and so people can save the date for next year. When will it happen? Do you have an idea? Oh, we haven't even thought that far <laughs> ahead yet. I mean, obviously, it's usually about the second Tuesday in January. All right, so people can, like, put that on their radar now. Exactly. I and would do that. Mark it down, and, um, you know, we'll let you know whether it's going to be a Putnam or it'll be at the Rome Ballroom next year. And, you know, next year, obviously, with more space, we'll probably bring back the chef demo again that we, we did in the past. Yeah, that was usually at, like, 8 in the morning, right? Yeah, that was usually at 9.30. 9.30. I think that was 9.30. Okay. And, 
And uh -huh. so yeah, so we're hoping to uh, you know make it bigger and better than ever, and you know keep it going. We're at what 22 years now. Let's keep it going for another 22 years. Yeah, well, you got to keep breathing. So I don't know if I'll be here 22 years from now, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, you will. Exactly. <laughs> well, we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna take a walk around and probably wrap this up. Okay. I think I got everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Do you know? Oh, I'll ask you later. Yep. All right, we're doing a little also, collaborating here. We're gonna have some nice flavors with this here. I think this is, yeah. All right, just walking through one more time. I'm just walking through one more time just to see, make sure I got everybody. And there's Lucinda again. Here I am. We're what? Where's those dishwashers when you need them? I know it. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, it's not me, thank God. Ugh, that is like a lot. That is work. 25,000 people are eating on campus here at UConn. It's amazing. All right. One more swoop around this side of the kitchen. Ah, we're seasoning the chicken now. This is the, this is the moment here. You see the taste good. Got to make sure this is all covered. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. I can smell it from here, and I'm probably what a couple feet away from you. Hopefully, it smells good though. It's not. Just it does. Oh my smelling. goodness! Are you kidding? Yes, absolutely. Gotta make sure you get peel back and get underneath the skin too. Oh. Yes. Peel back. Leave it. Still on there though. Mm -hmm. Right back over. Excellent. Wow. I'm pretty much done. Are you done? You oh yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Let's see. Oh, we're gonna go into the deep freeze. Awesome. Here we go. I like cold places, so. <laughs> so it's just gonna sit and marinate up until the point where you're about to eat it. All right. So I see some little red onions on top. Give me some flavor. I'm gonna add corn and avocado right before I put that in the you guys. You guys can get more of a flavor profile. Oh, are you gonna, like, um, how, how, how will you put the corn on there? We're just gonna mix it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Certain kind of corn or what? Just regular sweet corn. Sweet corn? Yeah, nothing, nothing too fancy. Frozen, fresh. I thought it out last night, so it's a little bit frozen. Uh -huh. I thought about doing fresh. Fresh would have had to boil and mm -hmm. it could take away from the flavor. Yeah. I don't wanna take away from the fish. I wanted to compliment the fish, you know? You had said it was kind of hard to find fish. Oh, well. So, was it really? I mean, yeah, like, what is that? Rob, Rob challenged me, and he said I could get you whatever you want. Oh. So I took him up on that. Oh, so you took him up on that. I did. So I asked him for comp, which is pretty pretty hard to get up on this part. You get it closer to, like, Florida or um, closer to, like, you know, the Pacific Ocean area and stuff. So I asked him for that, and I told him, totally made sure he got it from me. I wonder where he got it from. I know, but I know he's going to go to Fall River. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, I asked him for pair on an X just to mess with him. <laughs> Looks like I see your station with all the other ingredients ready to go, yep. and you're ready to serve them up right there. Yep. Looks awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. One more walk around here is what I'm doing. We are looking at the ingredients for the, the sous vide. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I recognize some of these products here. Chocolate chips, uh, Mountain Dairy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How how did that work? Did it did it bake properly? Oh yeah. See, here's the oh, there we product. Go. Yeah. Once you take it out of the oven, it's still got some um, give to it, and you can fold mold it whatever way you want, and then. Mm -hmm. Hardens up for you within like a minute. Got it. So the perfect mock taco shell. Uh, we strive for perfection, right? Yeah. Is the pat greased or anything or oiled? No, um, I mean there is some residual butter on it from the last wheels, but I uh -huh. do wipe it down every time. It's just warm from the oven. I see. Got it. So it helps it spread out a little bit, though. Mm -hmm. Just need some patience. What I usually do is spread it up because it's got the measurements on it. So I spread it out farther than I need, and then I wipe away 
down to oh, I see, yeah. the right size. Uh -huh. So everyone comes out. Talk about perfect. delicate. Yeah, Ooh. definitely. Highly breakable. Yep. But uh, just like a taco shell, you know? It's always yeah. annoying when you take them out of the package and they're all broken. Yeah, but then you might as well just get Fritos or something, yeah, right? Yeah, some tortilla chips or yeah. Nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There's a Hobart. There's... Everybody's working hard. This was another station. I'm going to take you out to the dining hall and get out of the kitchen so these lovely people can be working without me interrupting. Yeah. Yummy food. And I want you to see the uh, dining hall. Just going to take you around. Here are ingredients for the boiling point competition. That's for later where teams of chefs get some mystery ingredients and they have to create three tapas out of the mystery ingredients. Here's all the beautiful, colorful ingredients that people can choose from. And I'm going to go just give you a sweeping view of everything. All right. Here's the official. Yeah, and I think that's it for me. Culinary Olympics. Judging happens next. Oh, I'll show you where the judges are going to be. Oh, here are some beautiful steam. Oh, yeah. You're still here. You're, I'm getting some movie footage of people doing stuff. What are you, You're here with the bakery. This is Fran. Sandy. I'm sorry. I keep calling. I keep calling. I'm getting you. Sandy. There we go. That's right. Sandy. But don't film that. All right, all right. So what are you here with doing? What are you doing? We are just demonstrating new products on the spring day. Okay. Is it possible to get a demo or do we have to do that later? We're not demoing anything. We're just giving out samples. Oh, so what are we eating? What are we trying? <laughs> oh, um, how do I get back there? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta, gotta go around here. Coming. I couldn't figure out how to get in. <gasps> Ooh. Kasha bread fresh baked this morning. Oh my gosh. We're serving it with flavored olive oil. Uh huh. Oh, what's, what's, tell me the herbs and stuff that are in your focaccia. Oh, we would have to get back for that. That looks like rosemary and rosemary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are chocolate streusel brownies. Mm -hmm. These crumbly, crispy topping on the top. Mm -hmm. These are a new take on the magic bars. These are raspberry magic bars. Oh, raspberry. They're so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I never heard of that. Okay. And these are lemon delights. It's a sugar cookie with a lemon mousse on top. Uh. We have a version of them on the previous menu that has a chocolate chip cookie. Uh huh. And this one has lemon and chocolate. Sounds good. So these are the sampling things. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks for the info. I appreciate it. And I'm sorry for calling you wrong. Because <laughs> we always emailed each other. Well, and that's what your email was, yeah. Because I mean, like, how long have you been here at UConn? You've been working here for. 19 in Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hi. I remember you. You used to do the competition yep. back there, too. Yes. Um, but you're in a different department now? Or? No, I'm still with the bakery. I just, um, I haven't competed in a few years. So. Mm-hmm. You had some winning recipes, from what I remember. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do, but I don't even remember what they were. I don't know. Ragoon. That I, was one of my good ones, yeah. I did save the booklets that... Oh, really? With the recipes, I saved some of them. And I think I was here for like the first one. I think yeah. you were here. 
because I brought my kids when I was homeschooling. Yes. So they were like, they were like three and five. Yeah. For the Chronicle, yeah, ravings and cravings. But hopefully, this will go on charter, and we'll be good to go. Good luck to everybody. Well, we'll, we'll go get the judges later. But anyway.